22 program. It's part time. Um, so you would be going classes in the evening. So we open this program for people who are working um, so they could be able to work and go to school at the same time. Um, so it would be part time in the evenings. Um, yep. Classes are set to begin. Classes are set to begin um, November 22nd, but you would be in a two week orientation before that. So you would be in, so technically you'd be starting classes um, November 1st. And then um, your official start date of classes will be November 22nd. The total cost of this program is $18,803.60. That includes your book, your uniform, um, the ATI program that we use that's incorporated into our um, educational system. We also are co-accredited, which is Council uh, on Occupation Education. Not many schools have that um, accreditation, but we do, and it's a national accreditation, which means when you've been certified as a licensed practical nurse, you can take your, your um, degree anywhere and work within the United States. Some schools only offer it for you to work within PA, but our school lets you work your certification will take you to work anywhere within the United States. Um, we definitely do a, a rigorous course to, of enrollment. So the first step that you would do is attend an information session. So since you are here today, this will technically count as your information session. And then after you move from there, you will then um, either by me or your caseworker, I'll give you the application. We're doing everything virtually through email, of course, because you know of COVID. So the less that we can do in person, the better we try to do virtually through email um, and correspond in that way. Um, does anybody have any questions right now that I can answer for anybody? We do offer FAFSA. So if this is something that you're very interested in, we definitely tell you that one of the recommendations is to um, make sure you fill out FAFSA to see how much funding you can get. Um, we do accept Pell funding. So if you've never been to school before, um, you most likely can be offered something. Even if you don't offer, if you don't get offered health funding, we um, definitely recommend, especially if you're already in the nursing field or if you work in the hospital or something, you definitely wanna reach out to your employers to say, hey, I'm furthering my education. How can I go about getting some assistance? Nine times out of 10, depending on your employer, they would love to know that you're furthering your education, especially if you're going in the nursing field to see what type of assistance you can get. Um, we definitely tell people to go that, that route as well. Um, because of uh, COVID, we also get CARES funding, but again, we have to see what your FAFSA application is on file, so then we can be able to extend those services to you. If you don't have a FAFSA, we can't basically help give you the CARES funding that we receive. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I have the slides, so I'm trying to think what else I can say off of the top of my head. Oh, the classes will be held Monday and Wednesdays from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Like I said, it's in the evening. And then you'll have clinicals every other weekend. So if you're working or if even if you're not working, you're going to get your schedule from us at least three weeks to a month in advance. The director is very firm on trying to get out schedules. So not only you can be able to know what your schedule is, you can bring that back to your employer to say, hey, this is what my class schedule looks like, or this is what I, I need to switch weekends because, you know, I have clinicals on this weekend. Um, clinicals are from 6.30 a.m. Um, to 3.30 p.m. every other weekend. So like I said, you'll be getting your schedule a month in advance to know um, when your clinicals are. Um, so like I said, we try to start you off small, but once you get that, we hit the ground running from day one. Once orientation starts, we are getting you into your classes, we're getting your books, we're getting your computers. So definitely things I would say to start getting um, yourself, make sure you're technology savvy because you're gonna need to know how to use ATI, you're gonna need to know how to use Google Classroom. Um, make sure you know how to use Zoom correctly, because that's the type of tools that we're going to be using um, when classes start. Now we are open, we are hoping to open back full time, but we are going to start off hybrid first. That means maybe Monday nights you'll be in class and then Wednesday you'll be online. So you need to make sure you're now getting your schedule set up correctly. You know, if you have kids, I tell everybody, 
it's better to start now getting everybody on board. Hey, listen, I want to be a nurse. I need everybody on board to know that Tuesday and Thursday nights, I'm studying. I don't want to be bothered. So everybody in the family can help um, assist with your education. You know, we've had students now who are in COVID. It was kind of overwhelming on teaching them or going to class themselves, as well as being a teacher at home. So if that's a, one of your situations, you definitely probably want to start now while it's summertime, get everybody situated, get yourself situated. You know, I know one big fear of, for everybody is like, how am I going to pay? Now's the time. There's a lot, a lot of resources out here that you can take advantage of to get the education that you want. So, you know, we definitely will help with that. But you got to put the footwork as well. You can't just sit back and be like, oh, I'm going to expect somebody that's going to help me when I need it. No, you definitely got to do some research and um, reach out for yourself as well, as we will do the same. Um, I'm trying to think what else I can say about the program. Honestly, all our teachers are great. Everybody who's on staff at this current moment is a nurse and still working in the field full time. So not only are they teaching you guys, but they're also full time at the hospital or at the daycare, or I'm sorry, at the nursing homes that they work at. Um, and they're definitely, you know, been a nurse for years. We have people who've been nursing for 20 to 30 years. So you're getting the best education from somebody who's actually been in the field and seen everything. Um, I definitely want to tell you about um, um, clinicals. Our current, our clinicals right now are at Temple University, uh, Temple University Hospital. So you're going to see everything. You're, you're going to be in the emergency room. You're going to be on different floors. We try to put you in different scenarios. So you can get the, a taste of everything that you might expect when you come a nurse. Um, that's definitely something I say that they're at Temple, as well as the teachers are really good at trying to get you um, acclimated to everything that you possibly may see when becoming a nurse. Um, we don't just accept anybody and everybody to the program. You have to realize that becoming a nurse, we are signing off saying that you are fully equipped and knowledgeable, knowledgeable to take care of people. We want to put the best in the best in the field, you know, so if this is something you definitely want, we're riding right behind you on it. But just know that, you know, there's certain things that you have to do beforehand before getting into the program. So like I said, filling out the application, being able to take the T's. We usually offer the T's testing in person, but like I said, because of COVID, a lot of things have went to online. So you would be taking the T's test from home. That's the test of essential academic skills. Um, you can Google that if you're not familiar with it. Um, get yourself some background knowledge on it. Um, we also offer pre-bridge nursing classes um, to help if you haven't taken a test a while or you know you're not a good test taker or say you're not good at math and science and you need to brush up on those skills. We definitely have classes um, to help with that. That is the bridge program that we offer. Um, those classes, this will be the last session. It'll start in July. That will be the very last session before November classes start. Um, and that class will run between eight to 10 weeks and it's also in the evening and it'll be online. So everything right now we'll be doing from home until you know we get further instructions from um, Philadelphia or CDC on how to go about operating um, in person. But for right now, everything that we do, it will be virtual. We'll have meetings on Zoom with you. Um, and we also will be emailing you corresponding that way until further notice. Um, the classes are, the, the pre-bridge the pre nursing classes are held during the evening as well um, for those who are working. So we try to hold a lot of our classes in the evening because we know that a lot of people, you know, have stuff to do during the day. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's major. Oh, for the T's testing. Like I said, you'll be taking that from home. You want to allow yourself four hours to take that test. You don't have to take the whole four hours, but we have to give you four hours from the ATI system. So you get an hour in math, an hour in reading, an hour in English, and an hour in science. Like I said, you don't have to take the whole four hours, but we have to make sure that we give you a, um, four hours to take the test. And you would be taking that from home. So you definitely want to make sure you're in a quiet room and there's nobody in the room with you because what the system do does, it will scan the room. So you want to make sure that the computer that you have either has a working camera, 
and you can take it on a working desktop or a working laptop. You cannot take it from your cell phone. You can't take it from a tablet or you cannot take it from an iPad. It has to be a computer with a camera attached to it uh, as a desktop or a laptop. Um, prime example, we had someone already take the test and her room was scanned that she was by herself in it. Her cat ran across the, um, across the camera, computer shut down because it thinks you're cheating or something was in the room. So they can't, it can't pick up, oh, that's just an animal. So that's why we highly advise that everybody be in a quiet room by themselves to be able to take the test. Um, and once we see what your test scores are, we'll then move forward with an interview. So you'll be interviewing with me and the admission committee. And that interview looks like, you know, we ask you questions on why do you wanna become an LPN? Where are you gonna go with this, you know? Um, are you prepared to take classes online? You know, what are your technology skills look like? We don't want to set anybody up for failure. Um, we, we use the same motto as no student left behind, no nurses left behind. You know, we definitely don't want to set anybody up for failure or for something that you maybe not be able to do as yet. So we can be able to give you those resources to help with that. So this is why I say now is to take the time to get yourself acclimated to being used to getting on a computer. Um, you know, maybe spending a couple hours at night, you know, studying for your tests. These are things that you can do in the meantime, if you know that you are not um, good at test taking skills, these are definitely things that you want to start um, doing in the meantime to be able to get ready for the classes. So the, um, the deadline to become a part of the LPN program is October 15th. Like I said, we'll be starting in November. So we definitely want to make sure we're getting a head count of who's really going to be in the program and who's already set up with FAFSA and things of that nature and have already started making payments for their tuition. Um, so we can get that deadline by October 15th. Um, oh, another thing about tuition. Don't worry. It's not paid all at once. You're not paying the whole 18000 in all in one session. We break it down into four quarters. There's four levels. So think of each level as a semester. Um, so in that semester, you say you might as well round it up to 5,000. So each semester you're paying about 5,000. That's how we break down the, um, the tuition payment. We also have tuition payment plans. So you have to pay, you'll get a tuition payment plan five to six months in advance or um, before the next level. So if you say you got accepted now, you'll know how much FAFSA you should be receiving or whatever funding you're getting and then be able to pay to um, pay down that um, payment of the tuition for the first level. Um, so we try to give you five to six months in advance before the next level start to be able to pay um, down for each level. This is not a, this is a pay as you go program. So you have to pay off your level before you can move on to the next level. If you don't pay off the level, you cannot be able to move on to the next level. Does anybody have any questions or comments so far for me that I can answer? Okay, I'm going to take that as a no. Hello. Hello. Hi, uh, this is Miriam. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I just want to know uh, when they, when they, they because I'm, I'm sorry for of all coming late because like I was trying to get uh, connected. So I want to know uh, when the, the classes begin and when the test going to take place and what are the requirements? So like I was saying, let me get my, um, I have, show you. So I'm able to share my screen. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, what a connection. So we'll just skip over this part because you guys know my name. So I was just saying the District 1199C and Trading Upgrade Fund, we are a part of them. You can see this is our their mission statement, um, providing access uh, to career pathways in healthcare and human services. Um, so here goes the general requirements. So you can see what you need. Can you see that, Miriam? So you yes. must have a high school diploma or GED. 
Um, if you are from out of the country, you must get your high school diploma or GED or whatever you receive notarized. The reason why we ask that it's notarized, we got to make sure that what you learned in your country is equivalent to what's learned in America. So um, I will Google a notary republic or a notary in your area to see how they're running because of COVID. I know everybody's running differently. So you can get that um, started. So that's definitely something you want to take in mind if you don't have a high school diploma from America. Um, you must be have the ability to um, do a physical and things of that nature, two-step TB skin test, or we accept the x-rays. Um, we don't accept no felonies or disqualifying misdemeanors. Um, so if that's something you definitely know you have on your record, you definitely need to know it's either expunged, it's been cleared, we need all proper documentation. The reason why we ask that when you go sit for your um, nurse state board of nursing, they have the right to turn you down, even if it's something from 20 years ago. And I'm telling you this because we've had a student who had a misdemeanor or something of that nature when she was a teenager. And when she went to go sit for her state boards, the State Board of um, Pennsylvania turned her down because of something that was on her record from years ago. So she had to go through all the paperwork to get proper documentation to show that it was cleared, um, everything was fine so that she could be able to work in the healthcare. That is a big thing you definitely wanna make sure you take care of if that's an issue that any one of you may have because you know it's above our heads once it gets to the State Board of Nursing. If they tell you no, that's, it's a no. It's not us telling you no. Um, so those are things that you definitely want to think about. Um, to attend, an, of, of course, this, like I said, will be your information session now. You want to complete the application. Once you've complete the application and essay, you would then send that to me via email, and then we would go about making the payment of the $50 fee that is a part of the application. Okay. And that's non-refundable. Once you have done that, you then can register for the TEAS test. So you'll get instructions on how to set up your computer and things of that nature for the TEAS test via email. And you also have to make the payment of $65 to take the TEAS test. Another thing to keep in mind, we only offer the TEAS test twice. Like I said, we don't want to set anybody up for failure. So if you take the TEAS test the first time around and you don't do so well, we'll definitely recommend you take the pre-bridge nursing classes. That's why we offer those type of resources and tell you to come back again and take the test. If you take the test again and you're not reaching where the scores that we need you to, you need to have a 55% or better to be able to get into the program. And if you're not reaching those scores, we'll just say, hey, maybe you wanna try again, get some refresher classes, brush up on some skills. Because like I said, we're a no student left behind program. So we definitely don't wanna be setting anybody up for failure who can't meet the requirements that are needed. Because once you've been accepted, like I said, you're gonna hit the ground running, you're gonna walk, before, I mean, you're gonna crawl before you walk, but it's definitely an intense program from the start date of the class to the ending. You're going to be, it's going to be a lot of work. So we definitely, like I said, we don't wanna set you up for failure. We wanna let you know what you're getting yourself into beforehand. Um, once that is done and we see what your scores are, like I said, you'll have an interview with us and the admission committee, and I will send out the acceptance letter and the packet of things that you need to get done. And in that um, acceptance letter and packet, you'll get the drug testing that you need to have done, which is the 120 panel drug testing. You must already have a CPR license. We do offer CPR classes, but like I said, because of COVID, a lot of stuff has been limited to us. So you would have to go Google somewhere. You can get your CPR certification if you don't already have that um, until we get further notice that we can fully open back to regular capacity to do things of that nature. Um, I did say that it was a 22 to 24 month program because, you know, of course, you have to take in holidays and things of that nature. You'll be starting in the winter clay in the winter months. So, you know, we have to make sure if there's snow or if something of that nature, we put we put we put that all into account into the program as well. A lot of uh, another thing I want to mention, transportation. We do not offer transportation services. We are downtown from City Hall. We're literally directly from down the street from City Hall. So parking can get pricey if you do have a car. So you definitely want to think about how you're going to get um, to and from classes as well as clinical. Like I said, you will be starting in the winter months. So you definitely want to prepare yourself for 
what if stuff is you know not working or if they want on strike or if it's too cold outside you know how how are you going to get to and from classes is basically what i'm trying to get in so these are things you definitely want to think about you know are you going to pay for parking four times out of the week because again classes are monday and wednesdays and you have clinicals every other weekend so 90 percent of your time is going to be spent downtown in phil in the philadelphia area um, you will have 152 hours of including in clinical, and that's like I said, going to be Saturday and Sundays is when clinicals are held from 6:30 a.m. to 3:30 p.m. And then let me go on to the next slide. So here's my contact information as well. So the two main people you definitely want to be in contact with is myself and Mr. Khalil Mack. He's our financial aid officer. So any questions about financial aid, how much you need, you know, how to fill it out. Um, I'm sure with the um, your case manager, they can help that help you fill that out as well if you're having some um, a trouble with it. But any questions regarding financial aid, Mr. Mack is the person you want to reach out to. Um, everything else, you want to reach out to me for the um, your. Uh, application, like I said, either you or your case manager can reach out and we can get you set up um, to be in the classes and things of that nature. But you first want to definitely just start out with getting your application in and submitting that essay. That is the very first step. And then for all else, if there's anything other questions you may have, I also put my um, direct the director and my supervisor email as well. All three of us can help assist you in whatever you may need. So as you can see, the total cost of the program, if um, you didn't hear it, I said it was 18,800, and they changed the numbers, but it's $18,806.60. One of the out-of-pocket costs that you will have is shoes. Um, and then you, as you said, as you can see, the FAFSA you need to fill out for your Pell Grant. You also can register with CareerLink. CareerLink has helped our students get funding. Um, so you definitely can reach out to CareerLink if you haven't ever used CareerLink for any of your educational purposes before. Definitely reach out to CareerLink to see what type of um, resources you can get, even if it's just um, transportation to get to and from classes. Anything helps, you know, if it's uh, something you don't have to pay for and they're willing to give you the services and resources for you, definitely want to, like I said, use all resources that you can. Reach out to your employer, reach out to CareerLink, reach out to your case managers, ask them where, what funding you may qualify for. Um, because of COVID, a lot of funding has been, um, been available for everybody to use, especially during, um, to get education wise. Um, here are some of the courses on the left-hand side that you would be um, getting while in the program. Just so you know what you, like I said, you're getting yourself into what classes that you'll be having. And then that's it. If you don't have any more questions, comments, or concerns, um, I put up the website for 1199C training. I was talking with Ms. Brianna about it before. You can use that website and there's a form on there. Say, you know, you don't want to do LPN and you want to see what other classes we have to offer. That form shows you what upcoming classes we have. Plus we have new classes that are coming about. We also have a new EMT program coming about that's been hitting the ground well. We've had a lot of students already pass and already working as an EMT. So there's different routes you can take, especially if you know LPN may not be the route for you. We have CNA. So this for, um, this website, both of them, either one, or if you just type in District 1199C into the Google um, search bar, it'll pop up and it'll show you what classes and things of that nature we have. Um, I remember someone saying they were a teacher on here. I'm not sure what type of teacher you are, but we have the ECE program. If that's something you're also interested in, definitely check out the website um, to see where, you, you know, your, we can best fit, um, fit your needs. I have a couple of quick questions for me. If that's okay. Yes. Um, about the pre-bridge program, Does that, mm -hmm. do those classes have a fee? And if so, how much? No. Oh, I'm glad you asked that. The fee is free. Okay. So <laughs> I know I like free. I don't know what anybody else that does, but I love free. Um, so we get funding. So the, the funding that we get 
to make the bridge program is free. So you, it's no cost to you at all. So like I said, the only things that students will definitely need is to have a working laptop for right now connected to the internet. They know how to get on Zoom. Um, they definitely need to be technology savvy because homework is going to be online. Um, so those are things that definitely you want to get yourself well equipped with. But everything beforehand, before you get into the LPN program is free. Okay, wonderful. And then do you need um, to have your CPR certification for the bridge, the pre-bridge classes? No, you need to have, if you are getting it, if you want to be a part of the LPN program, you definitely need to have your CPR certification for that. Say if you're not ready to be a part of the LPN program, but you just want to take the bridge classes, that's more than fine. We rather you, you know, do something free first to see what you're getting yourself into before actually start paying for classes. And you're like, well, you know what, this is too much, or I'm not ready for all of this. So um, we definitely recommend if you are interested in the bridge program, please try to um, email me quickly because the deadline for that will be the ending of this month because we're trying to get started for the last one in July. Um, so we still have seats that are open for people who are interested to get in. Um, and so it does help. It really does benefit. We've already had a student who took her keys the first time. She didn't do well. She went into the bridge program, brushed, brushed up on her math and science. That's where she was really having trouble at and took her keys again and she did really well, you know. So it, it's, 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 a, it's really good to get that um, because I know I'm not good at math and I hate science. So I can imagine, you know, getting into the program, being an LPN, you're doing a lot of math and science, especially when we get to the drug medi um, medications and things of that nature, you're going to need to know how to give those to the patients and things. So um, these are definitely things to start doing and thinking about before getting into the program. Great, thank you. Um, does anybody else have any other questions or you can? Uh, or yes, um, this is Marion again. I, I just wanted to ask, when did, where are you going to send all the application online or how do we get the application to fill in? Um, so I can send the application to, I guess, one of you guys. I'm not sure how that works. Um, but I can send it and they can send it out to you or you can reach out to me and I can personally send it out to you, but it will be sent via email. So that's the, uh, an important oh. thing that you bring up as well. You must email me back your application as a PDF file or as a Word document only. Do not send it as a picture. I've had people who've taken pictures as a document. We can't have those as official documents because we have to send all this documentation in to the State Board of Nursing. It has to look official. So if you don't know how to do that, that's definitely something your case manager could probably work with you to show you how to set it up as a Word document or as a PDF file. But those are the only two ways I can accept the application. So Marin, if you see her email has been put in the chat. So if you send her email asking for the application, she'll be able to email it to you. Any other questions? Yes, just Miriam. So just email me when you get a chance. Remind me who you are, please, because I talk to so many different people and they'd be like, yeah, you remember me? And I'd be like, no, I don't. I'm sorry. I talk to a lot of people. So just say that, you know, we've you had the information session. You would like to get the application to move forward. And we can really we can move forward in that way. But the, that's the first step is filling out the application, doing the essay. And if you know you need assistance um, before taking your case test, you know, we can definitely get you signed up for the pre-bridge nursing classes. All right. Oh, you sound terrible. Kathy told me you got a cold. Yeah. Um, if there are no other questions, we can go ahead and do.